1992, Quentin Tarantino burst onto the scene with his crime film Reservoir Dogs. The film is centered on a group of hired thieves that are set to make a diamond heist. The job goes completely sideways. The group splits up with the plan to meet at a designated warehouse later on. As each one starts to show up, they begin to determine that there is a traitor in their midst. They begin to argue about who it could be and what should be done about it. The story unfolds in a very unique style, and Tarantino is applauded for his writing and filmmaking technique. From there, the world was his. His follow-up was 1994's Pulp Fiction. Tarantino once again threw out conventional storytelling and told multiple stories that had connections to each other out of linear order. While one character died in one scene, we might see them again later on. The two central characters in the story are Jules and Vincent, two hitmen that work for Marcellus Wallace. Their job is to get back a briefcase that has been stolen from him. After they retrieve it, they continue to go on multiple adventures before they can finally return it to Wallace. This film sent Tarantino straight to the moon. The film received rave reviews and nabbed Tarantino an Oscar for Best Screenplay. While both films featured many fan-favorite characters, there were two specific ones that fans zeroed in on. Now, most films would not even think twice about a shared cinematic universe. Back in 94, the idea of characters from different movies existing in a shared universe was unique. There were previous examples, such as the Universal Monster movies. Tarantino's contemporary from Miramax, Kevin Smith, would make an entire career from his shared viewist universe. But Tarantino's early sandbox approach to a shared universe drew in film fans. Eagle-eyed fans had noticed that Mr. Blonde Vic Vega from Reservoir Dogs, played by Michael Madsen, shared a surname with Pulp Fiction's Vincent Vega, played by John Travolta. Were these two related? The similar fashion designs of black suits, black ties, and a gun under the arm made them even more connected. Tarantino would reveal that, in fact, they were brothers. This sent fans' minds spinning. The stories that could come out of these two being related could be plentiful. Tarantino thought so as well, and had an idea for a movie that would see the brothers team up. Now, with Reservoir Dogs about to hit its 30th anniversary, it's obvious that we'll never see the film. What could have been? It's time to find out exactly what the fuck happened to this unmade Vega Brothers movie. When it was revealed that Vic and Vincent Vega were brothers, fans wanted to know more. The idea was so intriguing. While playing Vic in Reservoir Dogs wasn't Michael Madsen's first acting role, it did give him some film cachet to get higher and higher profile roles. The appearance of John Travolta in Pulp Fiction saved his career. Before this, he had been appearing in the Look Who's Talking films, which were looked at as generic Hollywood fluff. The first one had garnered some buzz as an entertaining film with Bruce Willis voicing baby Mikey. But by the time the third film was released, the luster had worn off. Travolta was working, but none of the movies he was in were setting screens on fire. Pulp Fiction completely reinvigorated his career. Now the question was, if the two brothers were to meet up on screen, how would that happen? In Reservoir Dogs, Vic Vega had gone on a psychotic binge and begun to cut up a cop with a straight razor. Oh, it was obvious he was off his rocker. Luckily, Tim Roth's undercover cop character, Freddy, put an end to Vic before he turned his sights onto the other thieves in their group. Vincent, over in Pulp Fiction, made a bad choice to hit up the bathroom while waiting for Butch to come back to his apartment. Also, Never leave your gun on the kitchen counter while you take a bathroom break. With both characters dead, how would they end up in a movie together? That's easy. Make it a prequel. During an interview on Opie and Anthony, Tarantino revealed what the movie would have been about. The title he had picked out was Double V Vega. In it, we would have seen the time period that Vincent was over in Amsterdam, running a club for Marcellus Wallace. Maybe there would have been a Royale with cheese scene. Vic Vega would have come to visit his brother, and what would have ensued was a crazy weekend they get swept up in. There would even be a chance to have a cameo from Ving Rhames as Marcellus Wallace. The chemistry between Michael Madsen and John Travolta is something we could only dream of in those roles. The two would eventually star together in the film Trading Paint from 2019. As time went on, it was obvious that if the film didn't happen soon, then it wasn't going to happen at all. Both actors were getting older, so trying to go back to their looks from the early 90s was going to be a problem. 
Tarantino moved on to other films, and before too long, the 2000s were coming to a close. He had moved away from crime films and was now exploring other ideas. He had made his kung fu epic Kill Bill, Volume 1 and 2, his horror film with Death Proof, and what he called a Southern with Django Unchained. Was the crime film even something he would do anymore? Fans would love to see Tarantino go back to his roots and tackle another crime film. But with Madsen and Travolta too old to play their characters again, how would the film ever get made? Quentin had an idea about this too. He had thought that he could twist the usual campy film narrative of making both Vic and Vincent part of a set of twins, meaning that each character would have a twin brother that looked just like them. With this, the film could be set in contemporary times where the brothers meet up to remember their fallen brothers. During this, they decide they need to get revenge. How would that work with other characters from both films? No one knows. Tarantino himself has said he didn't get much past the premise stage. He had an idea of what the movie could be, but didn't write out anything past that idea. When asked about it back in 2007, he said that even at that point, the actors were probably too old to even play their brothers. The likelihood of the movie ever getting made was very slim. Tarantino also laughs off any suggestion he'd do the digital uncanny valley de-age thing that Hollywood seems to be fixated on. Quentin is not interested in making something like The Irishman, and recasting with younger actors is simply blasphemous. The folks over at Little White Lies actually created a fake trailer to show what a modern version of the film could look like. They edited together shots and scenes from a bunch of different movies to make a story of what the movie could be. It turns out that both brothers ended up surviving their gunshot wounds, but Vincent might not realize that Vic was still alive. We see Vincent thinking of getting revenge on Mr. Orange from Reservoir Dogs, along with Marcellus Wallace and Butch from Pulp Fiction. It's a great mashup that gives you a great idea of what the film might have been like. Even if it's a little awkward jumbling scenes from films like Face Off, Trading Paint, and numerous straight-to-video Michael Madsen films. In more recent interviews, Quentin Tarantino has suggested that when the filmmaker makes his final film, he is thinking of moving his creative writing talents to penning books. He's already started as he released a novel version of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Could Double V Vega end up as one of his novels? He has stated before that it could be. Then the question is if he would use his old idea of setting it in Amsterdam in the early 90s, or the set of surviving twins idea, or both, or either? By turning this tale of brotherly love into a novel, QT would be without the worries of a budget or casting. He could easily set the story anywhere he pleased. All he would have to do is put the words on the page and let our imaginations do the rest. Any number of characters from any of his films could make an appearance. Or the adventures of the Vega brothers could be a comic book or graphic novel like he did with Django. One thing he has been a fan of doing lately is taking a historical moment and changing it. Maybe Vic and Vincent would end up changing the course of international politics from how they actually played out. Only Tarantino's mind knows for sure. Sadly, we'll never see the film materialize on the big screen. For Tarantino fans, it would have been a mind-blowing experience to see two of his iconic characters share the screen together. Maybe we would have had an answer to what makes both of the brothers turn into psychotic killers by the time we catch up with them in their respective movies. Unfortunately, we all know the time has passed to truly do this film justice, but everything happens for a reason. So no need to really get upset that our eyes will never gaze upon Vic and Vincent raising hell and eating burgers in Amsterdam, because not making this Vega Brothers movie allowed Quentin to focus on his other masterpieces, and I am sure glad that at least we got to see those, and some films are better left in our dreams and imaginations, or our drugs and hallucinations.